Hey everybody, Young and Hard here, and welcome back to The Wolf Among Us, Episode 3, A Crooked Mile, Part 2. And we're going to go speak to Buffkin, because Snow is pretty hard on him, and he seemed to have some ideas. I feel bad for little Magai. I love monkeys. Hi, Mr. Bigby. I can still help you catch Crane, you know. Oh, yeah? Yes. I saw him jump on the telephone before he left. He called up somebody. He said he needed to see his witch, or that he would need to get to the witch for that. Whoever that is. His witch? Yes, it sounded like the one he got his snow glamours from. Hmm. Uh, it's not, you know, if I'll see anything else. You didn't see anything else, did you? No, not, uh, not especially. Look, uh, the whole mirror thing, it's not your fault, alright? You mean it? Yeah. He would have killed you if you had to try to stop him. Why didn't you try and stop him? What do you want me to do? Yank on his hair? I'm only three feet tall. There are limits here. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'll just see if I can do anything about this. He's got a plan. You do that. Okay. Uh, talk to Snow. Hey, Snow baby, what up? Buffkin says that he overheard Crane call somebody before he left. Sounds like he's going to see a witch, or his witch. His glamour witch. Wait, really? None of the 13th floor witches would allow that sort of thing. They must be somewhere in the city. It's something, at least. Find anything? No, but there's enough notes and stuff here to take all night. Maybe check that stuff there. Surely the witches on like the 13th floor could do like a locator spell or something? I don't know. Oh, okay, we're gonna go around. There's the trip trap key. What is it? Oh, the, not the, the key to his room at the yeah, open, open arms. arms key. You still haven't told me what was in there. I want to know. I need to know. Crane was uh, paying Lily to live out a fantasy of him and you together. Forgive me if I spare you the details. I keep thinking back. I keep replaying moments in my head. Interactions with him when he'd catch me in the elevator or bump into me outside. <sighs> There's only so much you can repress, you know? Snow, you, you couldn't have known. No, I could have. That's true. She Come on, have. let's keep looking. Uh, paper. Ichabod Crane, are there any updates to the extra funding I requested? As I explained in my last letter, the conditions here could do with some improvement. I'm seeing some unrest from the residents, and I have to admit I can see why. The farm should not be a punishment. I'm sure you're busy, but I think this should be made a priority. Best, Wayland Smith. Okay, so the farm is obviously not a great place to live. Dear Mr. Ichabod Crane, I am writing to ask again that you please send someone to fix the air conditioning in our unit. It's burning up in the apartment and Pinocchio says his skin is flinching. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I assume it's, <laughs> it's something gross. And I'd really like it if you'd fix the air like we asked you three months ago. At the very least, provide us a fan in the meantime. Sincerely, Boy Blue. <laughs> His skin's <spinning. laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Mr. Crane, you said you'd pay to have the plaster redone in my building after the last incident in 204. It's falling off the fucking walls. Please fix it. I can't rent out that room as it is, and I've already been waiting for days. Not to mention you already promised me you'd send someone to fix the big crack in the glass on the floor do uh, in the front door. Well, guess what? It's worse now. Get your shit together, Mr. Toad. <laughs> is that from me, the breaking it? Did Crane ever do any work? Only when Cole was around. So what is it? King Cole was his boss or something? Who 
needs a lock when you got super strength. There's a page here that was torn out. Oh yeah? Bufkin, do you know what was here? It's a ring, at least. Every magical item not retained in the armory is assigned to someone in Fable Town. It must be this witch he is going to see. Yeah, I only recently heard about this meeting. Why didn't you mention this before? No one asked me. Buffkin! <laughs> and I'm hungover. I'm sorry. He set the meeting Buffkin. at 2 a.m. Tonight. What's going on? Is the mirror fixed yet? Oh, Bluebeard, this Bluebeard. isn't the time. Is the mirror fixed or isn't it? You called I me to- I called just to see if you knew where Crane could be, and that was it, okay? And I'm sorry I said anything more than that. Well, you did, and I know. The cat's out of the bag. So, can we find the dull pervert or not? No, it can't be fixed. It's missing a piece. This is none of Bluebeard's business, Bigby. None of my business? Crane's the murderer. He escaped. It seems he spoiled your every attempt at locating him. And now it's none of my business? We don't know if he's the murderer. Oh, please. Of course he is. Look, this just isn't the time. He took a piece of the mirror so we can't use it. The only thing we know is that Crane's going to see a witch at 2 o'clock. A.M. or P.M.? A.M. Listen, Bluebeard, you're not a part of this. I don't think you're in any position to turn away help. Define help. What do you know about Crane, anyway? That he has the stones to kill prostitutes like any common sex-frightened serial killer and not face a real challenge. Look, we know that Crane is going to see a witch, and it's to acquire a magic ring. What's the ring? We don't know what it does or who it's assigned to since Crane tore its page out of the book. This farce was your ridiculous idea for a plan. I mean, who put you in charge in the first place? Fixing the mirror was the most logical You're thing. You're a secretary. He's the sheriff. And none of you were chosen to run this office. Who elected you to make these decisions? Nobody, but that Who doesn't... elected her to spend my money? Well, I've been doing that unofficially for years now. Unofficially is not officially. Snow can obviously handle this, so let's drop it. Well then, excuse me for having the Commonwealth in mind. So he, is he the funder of the people or something? All right, let's just look on the bright side. We know Crane is going to see the witch that's been supplying him black market glamours. Thanks to me. And that he'll be there at two. So that gives us a few short hours to find out who it is and where they live and get them all at once. And a few shorter hours the more you babble about it. We haven't been the ones babbling. And that's if he's even going there. We're trusting a monkey's interpretation of a phone call. It's not an interpretation. It's what he said, all right? Yeah, and it's what we have. So let's go on it, okay? I didn't mean that, Since Buffkin. Since Lily used the glamours, she'd have known who I looked the witch away was. And, panicked. and I don't think Holly's burned her things yet. It would probably have the address or a phone number or something. And Bigby is free to go there if he likes. But I think the question you should be asking is just what do the two Tweedles know about this? That's a good point. It doesn't matter what they know. After tonight, they'd never go to their office. They're not smart enough to try and go anywhere else. The Trip Trap is the better option to track the witch down. That has to be our focus. If Holly has Lily's things, that'd probably be the safer bet. I don't really care what you two do. I'm going to his apartment. What? You can't just go up there. And why the hell not? We already looked for the key, remember? I don't know where it is. Then I'll pick the blasted lock! <sighs> I've wasted enough time waiting for the mirror to find him. I won't waste any more. You just can't go up there alone, all right? I've no interest in nicking his drapes, my dear, if that's what concerns you. What concerns me is you traipsing through possible evidence. Oh, now it's evidence. Before you had no interest, and now it's a crime scene. Bluebeard, just stay out of it, all right? You'll just mess things up further. I can't get any more messed up. They can. We have to find the witch, <laughs> Bluebeard, oh, they can. since that's where he's going. Or the sniveling weasel chickened out, never went anywhere, and is upstairs right now in his pitiful penthouse, crafting a fort out of couch cushions. <laughs> Look, this is how a smart person would do it. So this is how we're going to do it. Wherever you go, I'll go to the other. 
I don't like you going anywhere unsupervised. He's up to something. I don't know what it is, but we don't have the time to really worry about it now. Where are you gonna go, Bigby? Hmm. Okay. So you leave Crane alone, and we'll leave you alone. I'd love to join you, but there's some business I need to attend to. No, no, I'm better off dealing with things alone. I don't need sympathy and I don't need charity. Crane's apartment, D's office. You know what? Crane's apartment. I'd love to join you, but there's some business I need to attend to. Crane's place is right here. I should check that out first. Perfect. And I'll go to those two imbeciles' office. Crane's penthouse number is 1903. Let me know what you find. I hope so you know So you go see doing. Holly. That's a good bet, because she likes you more. So my theory is either it is Crane or someone is framing Crane because it's, it's entirely possible that someone could be using a glamour of Crane on a Lily who was glamoured to be Snow White. Like, I don't know, it's, it's possible. Like, if they could do it to Lily, they could do it to Snow White. Or, uh, who knows? It could be Bluebeard pretending to be Crane. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, if you liked the episode, let me know in the comment section below. And we'll leave this here and see you in part three. Bye.